esteemed privilege to have uh, Dr. Sotomoto in here in the audience as we uh, invite uh, Professor Endo uh, to the stage. He's professor and chairman of neurosurgery uh, here from Sendai Toko University. And he will be talking uh, to us today on advances in diagnosis treatment of Moya Moya disease. Thank you. Thank you very much <coughs> for kind introduction. Uh, I'm Dr. Endo, and I would like to thank Dr. Uh, Professor Ota to give me a chance to talk about uh, Moya Moya in this wonderful Sadamoto lecture. <coughs> this is a COI. And actually, I became a chair in this uh, April, and uh, this picture is taken in early April. And in Japan, uh, each year we celebrate uh, spring to see a, a beautiful cherry blossom, but uh, I was a little bit disappointed because this April is a little bit hot and uh, you cannot see any uh, cherry blossom flowers it, it fall and uh, you can see only green leaves, but anyway, uh, this is the beginning of my uh, department. <coughs> and let me talk about a little bit about the history of our department. This bronze statue is Professor Jiro Suzuki, who is a founder of neurosurgery of Tohoku University. And uh, <coughs> he found uh, Moya Moya. He named uh, the uh, name of the disease. So that's why I'm, talk I'm going to talk about Moya Moya uh, this evening. And he held international symposium on surgery for cerebral stroke in 1987 in, here in Sendai. And a lot of famous neurosurgeons get gathered here from all around the world. And you can find probably some, some of you know uh, Professor Yasagil, and he was a famous uh, neurosurgeon from Zurich and uh, performed first uh, STMC anastomosis in human. And here is Professor Jiro Suzuki's uh, handprint. And this is another example, and you can find a, a famous and vascular guy, Pierre Rasjanius from Paris, and you can also find a, a neurosurgical giant, a Professor Robert Spetzler from Phoenix, Arizona. And if you're uh, interested in this uh, historical material, uh, this is, you know, placed in the Kona Hospital. It's a 20 minutes drive from here, so I can introduce you this uh, materials. So I'm going to talk about a little bit about history of Moya Moya disease. In 1957, uh, two cases of bilateral internal carotid artery hyperplasia were reported. And this was the first report of Moya Moya. And after that, uh, similar cases were uh, reported a lot. And uh, at the time, the disease were called uh, spontaneous occlusion of the circle of Willis. And after that, Professor Juro Suzuki named this disease as Moya Moya. Moya Moya is a Japanese expression for something hazy, hazy just like a puff of cigarette smoke, which is very similar to the angiographical appearance of the, you know, Moya Moya collateral vessels. This uh, disease, Moya Moya, is uh, rare, and the annual incidence of Moya Moya is 0 0.5 to 1.5 per 100,000 in East Asian countries. But in other countries like North America, it's much more rare, 0 .5, 0 0.1 per 100,000 in other regions, including North America. And Moya Moya is an uh, east-west gradient in global distribution. <coughs> and this female dominant disease is, uh, have two peaks in terms of the uh, onset age. In young generations, they uh, developed ischemia on the other hand, the senior generation developed hemorrhage. The diagnosis of Moya Moya is made by a, a, a classic a conventional angiography. And initial definition of Moya Moya is including stenoclusive changes at the terminal portion of ICA and abnormal vascular network formation at the base of the brain with bilateral involvement. <coughs> And these angiographic features are very similar to that, that of the appearance of, uh, you know, the cigarette smoke. That's why the name of the disease is Moya Moya. The early famous work of uh, Professor Jiro Suzuki is this 
the staging di diagnosis of the uh, disease based on the angiographic features. In stage one, you can see only a slight uh, narrowing of the internal carotid artery at the terminal portion. And in stage three or four, MCA and ACA is going to be disappeared. And in the final stage six, you cannot see any internal carotid artery and it was converted to the EC and uh, Velter Buzzer artery system. And the whole brain were finally supplied by the ECA or Velter Buzzer system. So you can say this conversion, like a physiological conversion in a way. <coughs> So what is the uh, mechanism of the moya moya disease? You can see the stenosis or occlusion only in the anterior circulation, not in the posterior. So this was partly explained by the embry embryological mechanisms. Actually, in the vessels of the anterior uh, circulation, these vessels were uh, coming from the neural cleft origin. On the other hand, the basilar or uh, vertebral artery were coming from the mesoderm. So uh, it's totally different from this, you know, <coughs> two parts of the vessel, which is, which can explain why the uh, limited uh, vascular territory is appearing the moya moya. So this meeting is for the MRA, so I'm going to talk about uh, a little bit about MRA. <coughs> So Suzuki's or, or original staging diagnosis were done by uh, conventional angiography, but Professor Hawking from Hokkaido University reported that, you know, MRA can work similarly uh, as a classical angiography, and MRA can diagnose the staging uh, like a, a conventional angiography. So what is the histopathology of the uh, Moya Moya? So this slide is showing the uh, pathology, pathological features of Moya Moya disease. If you look at the, you know, <coughs> the histopathology of the uh, intracranial vessels of, of, of Moya Moya, you can see uh, uh, intimal hyperplasia and waving of the internal elastic lamina and attenuation of the media, which is totally different from the one compared with the atherosclerotic changes of the intracranial vessels. And if you look at the atherosclerosis, which is characterized by the positive remodeling of the uh, vessels, including eccentric stenosis, <coughs> atherosclerotic plaque with large diameter. In contrast to the atherosclerosis, Moya Moya is showing a negative remodeling, which is including small diameter of the vessel, concentric stenosis with no plaque. So these histopathological uh, features of Moya Moya is recently uh, shown uh, by a MRI <coughs> technique. And this uh, heavy T2 uh, imaging can show uh, external diameter of the vessel. And in Moya Moya patients, <coughs> the eccentric stenosis <coughs> uh, was shown, can be shown by the uh, T heavy T2 weighted imaging, which is one of the uh, important role in the diagnosis of Moya Moya. And recent MRI development can show a uh, uh, slight enhancement of the vascular wall in uh, Moya Moya disease, especially for the patients with the uh, uh, pro progressive ones. And this vessel wall enhancement is very important as a predictor of Moya Moya disease progression. So this recent advancement of the MRI diagnosis can, <coughs> can be referred to the uh, diagnostic guideline in Japan. This guideline is the uh, final, the newest one, uh, revised in uh, 2021, and which is showing the, one of the important things is decreased in the outer diameter of the intracranial vessel, especially in the terminal portion of the ICA and the horizontal portion of the MCA bilaterally on heavy titivated imaging. So I can <coughs> show you the uh, genetic uh, background of the uh, uh, Moya Moya disease. <coughs> we were uh, 
uh, suspecting that uh, you know some association with the genetic background uh, with the moya moya because 15% of the moya moya patients have family history. And finally, we found that, and we reported the uh, 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 existence of RNF-213, which can be seen in 80% of the Japanese Moyamai patients. And this RNF-213 mutation was uh, on the chromosome 17, which is coding ring finger protein 213. And homozygote variant is associated with early and severe onset and extracranial vascular involvement, such as stenotic lesions in pulmonary, coronary, and renal arteries. We found that <coughs> homozygote RNF213 has a potential predisposing factor for uh, pulmonary artery stenosis in MMD. This patient has a, a homozygote vari variation, and uh, admitted to a hospital with frequent TIA, which is an ischemic uh, attack, and uh, we propose uh, intracranial surgery for this patient, but you know, this patient has uh, severe pulmonary artery stenosis and cannot be tolerated surgery, so we give up to do surgery. So RNF-213 can show a poor clinical outcomes in this Amoya Amoya patient. So this disease is, has a genetic background, but surgical treatment is still the gold standard for Moya Moya, especially for symptom symptomatic patients. And we have three choices for uh, surgical revascularization surgery, and one is standard STMC anastomosis. We call it direct revascularization. And another one is indirect revascularization surgery, which is expecting the angiogenesis through the temporal muscle or something like, uh, you know, the uh, peripheral uh, histology. And another one, the final one is combined revascularization surgery, consisting by the, uh, both by the direct and the indirect bypass. So the main role of surgical treatment is kind of forced ECIC conversion, which is helping the physiological ECIC conversion of the uh, Suzuki staging. So what is the optimal surgery for ischemic uh, symptomatic Moya Moya disease? And this paper is showing a meta-analysis of 11 nanoticals and uh, this uh, meta-analysis is showing that the usefulness of direct surgery compared with the indirect bypass surgery. So <clears throat> in our department, we usually do a, a combined surgery including direct and indirect surgery, which is the most strong revascularization potential for the Moya Moya disease. So let's go back to the Japanese guideline for the treatment of Moya Moya and uh, this guideline is, you know, recommend doing the surgical revascularization as reason reasonable uh, treatment method for Moya Moya manifesting as several ischemic symptoms. Now I can show you representative cases of a Moya Moya treated by a bypass surgery. This patient is 39 years old male, and as you can see, this patient has a, a is cerebral ischemia, infer I mean infarction in the temporal occipital region. And the left panel is showing the SPECT <coughs> analysis and compared with the uh, infratentorial cerebral region, supratentorial hemispheres were mildly de decreased in the hemodynamics. And the right panel is showing the classical angiography. And as you can see, there are no MCA and ACA, and you can see your, your developed Moya Moya collateral vessels. In contrast to the uh, internal carotid artery system, this is showing the external carotid artery, and this patient has no ECIC conversion. So the physio physiological system of ECIC conversion doesn't work well in this patient. That's why this patient manifested ischemic uh, infarctions. So we decided to do a bypass surgery. And now I can show some surgical video 
<coughs> this is the surface of the brain, and you can see a dilated, abnormal, uh, small vessels. And now I'm suturing the superior, uh, superficial temporal artery to MCA. A moya moya vessel is very fragile, so we need we need to care about the injury of the, especially for the intima of the vessels. We use the tensile suture, which is very you know thin sutures, and now confirming the patency of the bypass by video angiography. And you can see the you know bypass is working well. So after surgery, we do a, a MRI and spectral analysis. And the next day after surgery, you can see a very you know, good development of the bypass. And, uh, but you know, the next day after surgery, the spect is showing the focal hyperperfusion of the, uh, you know, the uh, area of the bypass area. But it will spread out within the one week after surgery. During this period, we control the blood pressure very strictly, and uh, <coughs> you know, sometimes this appearance is very risky for postoperative hemorrhage, so we have to be care about the patient. So this phenomenon is called hyperperfusion syndrome, which is uh, sometimes manifesting a delayed hemorrhage. So we have to do a, a strict control of the blood pressure after surgery. And minocycline is sometimes useful to prevent uh, MMP9 uh, inhibitor. And Adalavon is also useful as a free radical scavenger. And this is a pitfall of the post-operative care for the uh, bypass surgery in Moya Moya. So another topic Another recent topic of uh, Moya Moya uh, surgical treatment is JAM trial, which is Japan Adult Moya Moya trial. In this trial, we uh, proved the effectiveness of direct bypass to prevent future rebleeding in the Moya Moya disease. <coughs> in Moya Moya disease, the uh, senior generation developed hemorrhagic transformation. Among these uh, patients, uh, posterior hemorrhage is uh, much more uh, risky for future hemorrhage. And posterior hemorrhage is higher risk of re-bleeding and also greater benefit from a bypass surgery. So why their posterior, posterior hemorrhage is high risk for re-bleeding? In the angiography, you can see uh, channels from the base of the brain to the, uh, through the moya moya to the cortical vessels. And we call this channel uh, like a choroidal channel, thermic channel, and LSA channel. And this is, this is the essential pathology of the moya moya vessels. And if you can see, if you, if you see a choroidal vessels in the angiography, this choroidal channel, channel is risk, the risk of the posterior hemorrhage. So surgical uh, bypass surgery is very useful for choroid, the patient with choroidal channel, which is, has a high risk for a posterior hemorrhage. So this is the guideline of the Japanese, <coughs> and uh, which is showing the uh, revascularization surgery is also effective for the uh, hemorrhagic moya moya disease. So let me show you about the representative cases of hemorrhagic moya moya treated by bypass surgery. This patient is 40 years old female and admitted to a hospital with coma. So in the acute stage, we do our external ventricular drainage to control the intracranial pressure and send the patient to the rehabilitation service. And one year after surgery, she, she can walk with some assistance and the ADL is almost independent. So I do a MRI scanning, and you can see uh, some, you know, the high intensity uh, lesion around the periventricular area, and the left panel is showing the vessel wall imaging and the circumferential enhancement of the uh, 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 the region is observed. 
in the, in the uh, peri ventrica uh, area. And we go to the uh, conventional angiography, and as you can see, uh, there is a microaneurysm along the posterior uh, choroidal artery. And uh, this is the, actually a choroidal channel, channel from the moya moya vessel through the medullary artery to the cortical artery. And we have actually uh, three choices, I mean three surgical choices to prevent future hemorrhage. One is endovascular access to the aneurysm, and another one is transcortical, transventricular resection of the aneurysm. And, but two method is very risky because this is the uh, coll uh, collateral circulation. So if you reject the aneurysm or you can uh, embolize the uh, aneurysm, but it will result in a ischemic complication after surgery. So finally, we decide to uh, perform a bypass surgery to the cortical, which will reduce the hemodynamics of the microaneurysms and we expect the uh, disappear disappearance of the aneurysm. And this is the angiography, and we can see the, which is the distal side of the microaneurysm. So we carefully see the MRI and uh, angiography. This is a fusion image on the MRI and the angiography. And the pink one is the uh, distal side of the microaneurysms, so target vessel. This is the target of the bypass. And during surgery, we uh, use the uh, uh, neural navigation system and do the same thing, the bypass. There is no microaneurysm in the surface of the brain, but it's, you know, deeply seated behind the uh, brain surface. This is the uh, distal side of the microaneurysms. And I'm doing a bypass and checking the patents of the bypass, and it works well. And this is the result. You know, the right side is showing the angiography two weeks after surgery, and you can see the, you know, disappearance of the aneurysm, and uh, our surgical strategy were actually uh, successful. This is another example. This patient has asymptomatic moya moya, and in the outpatient clinic, we found a white intensity region in the, uh, around the periventricular area. And I <coughs> do a angiography, and as you can see, you can find a microaneurysm very similar to the last patient. And we applied vessel wall imaging for this patient, and uh, you can see the correspondence of the uh, microaneurysm and the enhancement effect of the vessel wall imaging. So vessel wall imaging is effective to diagnose these uh, hemorrhagic uh, risk, fac risk uh, microaneurysms. And I do a bypass surgery for this patient and after surgery, the microaneurysm disappeared. And in the right side, you can see a you know, disappearance of the uh, enhancement of the microaneurysms. So this vessel wall imaging is a very good tool to diagnose microaneurysms and uh, good to also a good tool for the, you know, the curability, uh, diagnose the curability of the sur surgery, bypass surgery. This is almost, a, almost the uh, last slide. In Jap Japanese survey is showing that the, you know, the onset age of the moya moya is shift from the uh, child foot to adult foot which is partly explained by the, by the uh, aging society of Japan. And this elderly moya moya is actually, uh, uh, is not, not, have a, not have a good uh, clinical prognosis. And this slide is showing the result of the retrospective analysis of elderly moya moya. <coughs> and we found uh, 44 out of 254 patients uh, between 2017 and 2022, and uh, we found that 7.2% uh, of the patients uh, manifested a stroke per each year. So most of the patients manifested this uh, catastrophic uh, hemorrhagic transformation. So the elderly patients uh, with moya moya 
has a high risk for uh, fatal hemorrhagic transformation. So we have to be care about the uh, elderly moya moya. So we now conducted a uh, multi-center survey of moya moya disease over the age of 60 in Japan to clarify epidemiology, pathophysiology, and clinical outcome of the elderly patients with moya moya over 60 years old. So in conclusions, we, I talked about advances in diagnosis and treatment of moya moya. In addition to the classical angiography, MLA and ML vessel wall imaging is playing an important role in the diagnosis of moya moya. Surgical treatment is still the standard treatment option for symptomatic moya moya, though genetic background is becoming clearer. We started to conduct multi-center protective observational study to clarify clinical course of the elderly patients with moya moya. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>